Let's see where we can access the REST API documentation. So we've seen how we can access vManage, now where we can find the documentation. A critical part for any API is the documentation. Um, how you start interacting with the API, what the authentication parameters are, where the endpoints are, everything can be found in the documentation. So I have here for you the link for, for this. I also have it open in my browser right here. So the link for it would be sdn-docs.cisco.com and then product documentation and then command reference and then vManage REST APIs. So that's the link. I have it for your reference in the PowerPoint presentation so you can access it there. Also, if you use your favorite search engine and you search for Cisco SD-WAN REST API, uh, the first link uh, will be this. So very easy to find. And if we have a look at it, we see how it's organized, the, um, the API. There's a schema to it. There's a logic to it, of course. And we have the overview important information here in the sense that we go over what an API is, what the verbs available are uh, for you, the get, put, post, delete that we talked about. You should be familiar with them by now. Get, we use it to retrieve or read information. Uh, put to update an object. Post to create a new object, a new entity in the, in the system. And then delete to remove an object. And we also have here is a simpler alternative to mechanisms such as RPCs, SOAP, and uh, web service definition language, of course. Links, available API calls. We see here how we organize the calls. We, they're organized in what we call uh, resource collections. So similar to the graphical user interface that you've seen previously, um, here we have the APIs organized in a similar fashion. So if there's an administration tab in the graphical user interface, there's an administration collection on the REST API side. So this is where you manage users and users group. Then there's certificate management, the configuration part, device inventory, monitoring, real-time monitoring, troubleshooting tools. So we try to keep it consistent between the graphical user interface and the REST API so that it's easier for users of the API and of the product to just migrate between them seamlessly and start developing right away. We see here the resource data, the REST methods available. Um, yeah, it, it's a very good read to get you started with the vManage REST APIs and the Cisco SD-WAN REST APIs. Next, we'll have a look at the buckets. So their alarms, audit log, and events APIs. This is what we were talking about. Um, you can get this information from a third party tool, right? So we have a monitoring system or a ticketing system. You can actually extract the data and build logic on top of that uh, within another system. Bulk APIs, uh, device action status APIs, device configuration APIs, device inventory, real-time monitoring, software maintenance, and then troubleshooting APIs. So in here, I just wanted to cover the device templates because we will use this extensively once we build our first application later in the course. So the device templates, uh, we have two options here. We talked about templates um, in the graphical user interface when we cover vManage and dashboard. So device templates, we have two options. We have the option of attaching them to specific devices or detaching them. So I want to apply the template to a device or I want to remove that template. Uh, so in here, we can see how this is accomplished using the API, right? What the steps necessary to do this are to attach a device template over the API. So I see here they're very nicely organized in three steps and then two sub steps. Um, I see the endpoint, the URL that I need to go to to start this process. So this is my resource, my REST API resource or endpoint that we kept talking about. So the method in this case is post, right? So it's a post um, call that we're doing. 
and then requested parameters. Let's scroll a bit down. In this case, this specific calls, it has a mandatory parameter. We see here device template JSON is required. So if you don't pass this, um, the call will fail. Basically, we'll say, hey, uh, you need to pass a parameter, and it's this. And we see it's a string, and we have a description of it right here. So if you're asking yourself, OK, the device template JSON, how does it look? How do I know how to build that JSON and how to build my call? That's a question that's answered right here. So we see here, issue the post to generate the device input variables. So this would be an example of your request and response. So this will be your payload. You see here template ID, device IDs. Uh, so this is, in case you're wondering, device template uh, ID JSON, how it looks like. It's all in the documentation. Critical part to have a look at it and read through it so that you know how to interact with it. And then we also have an example of a response. Um, this is, of course, just an example. Yours might look a bit different. Most of probably generated on the date will be different, of course. Um, so you see it's fairly verbose. And in this case, this template has actually some variables that we're saying that you can pass in. And in this case, the host name, the system IP, and the site ID are the three template variable counts. So these are, if you remember, we were talking about this, these are the variables that you can pass into the system once you apply the template. So um, in this case, I'm applying it to a VM1 instance. If it will be VM2, you just update this to a VM2. So these are dynamically populated and ready there for you to change as you apply the templates to specific devices. Perfect. So now if we go back um, to the VMI REST APIs, organized nicely in buckets, um, start having a look at them, start exploring, uh, reading through them. I think a nice place to start, of course, is the overview here. Read through it, and then as you progress and become more comfortable with the, um, with the documentation and the REST API, you'll find out the schema and how the calls work um, and how the responses are supposed to come back and how the, what the payloads are and what they're supposed to be. So have a read through this. Like I said, the documentation for REST APIs and any API in general is critical because that's how you read through it and you know how to start interacting with the API. So in this course so far, we've covered how to access vManage. We've had a look at the dashboard, all the components in the dashboard. And then we've also had a look at the vManage REST API documentation. So the SD-WAN fabric do or REST API documentation, you've seen how it's organized. You've seen how, where you can get started. You've seen how to build the payloads, how to access the URLs and the resources that are available there for you. And in the next section, we'll have a look at the Swagger API documentation. And we'll hope uh, you'll have fun in there. And uh, I also hope you found this interesting. And thank you so much for viewing.